and just continuing on with this uh, grade, whoops, include vector. So then somewhere in main, and, and usually what you would do is you would create a class of grades, right? You would want to provide some sort of a nice public interface to the vector, but right now we're just going to demonstrate how to use the vector in main. So to do this, I create, so, uh, you know, we start off with the type, and then I use the angle brackets to specify the type of object that the vector can store. And in this case, it will be an integer. So each element or each component or each item of the vector can be an integer and only an integer. Then we give our vector a name. So what this would do is this calls the default constructor and it creates an empty vector of integers. So this creates an empty vector of ints via the default constructor. Okay. Now another thing that we can do, let's let's assume that uh, I'm going to comment this definition out, okay? And there is also an explicit constructor and I'll show you a list of of the public some of the public methods. This is a a pretty uh, complicated class as a lot of uh, methods. And of course, more methods means more power, more ways that you can manipulate the vector itself and the elements in the vector. But I can also specify that I want to store 10 grades, and I want to give them an initial value of 0. All right. So this is a call to the explicit constructor. And what this does is this creates a vector of size 10 with the elements 0 through 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and that gives us 10 elements. And each element is given or is initialized with the value 0. Just like this. And it's important not to get confused. So in this case, these are integers. We could store other objects in here. But don't, can, don't get confused uh, between the value and the index or the location. Okay. Now in this case, they're both integers or they look like integers. But these values could actually be students or events or dates or times or any kind of an object. Now there are two, two ways to refer to a given, so, so keep in mind that this whole thing is the grade. The grades object consists of all 10 of these integers, and we can refer to an individual integer. So let's say if I say C out, and there are two methods for doing this. There is the at method. So if I'm talking about a grade at a particular position or location, I simply give that value's position. So 5, for example. And when we run this program, it will print out this value, which of course is 0. Okay. And this is just a call to the at method. There is an overloaded operator called the subscripting operator. And it looks like this, the square brackets. And you simply specify the location. And that will give you the value at that location. So this is the subscripting or index operator.
You can also use this to store values. You can use this in an assignment. So if I finally get a grade for my sixth assignment, remember that we're starting at zero, so my sixth assignment is going to be at location five, then I can use that in an assignment just like that. And so now when I see out, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. I'm storing the value 86 in location 5. So I'm replacing 0 and storing 86. And now when I refer to that, I'll print 5. And of course, all of these evaluate to integers, so I can also make assignments. Uh, this will illustrate some of the power of a vector. I can also assign elements to other elements. So if I want to store in position 0, the first position, the grade that I just assigned to position 5, then I can write an assignment like that. So I can swap elements very easily. And now this will replace 0 with 86. There's also a method that will give me the size of the vector. So in this case, the size method will return 10. And as you can see, I've been using integer literals or constants here to refer to these positions, but I can also use the value of a variable. So if I want to loop over all of the elements of my vector, I can simply write a for loop. And the value that I get from the size method is actually an unsigned integer. So the proper type here is unsigned. And I want to start at position 0. And I want to loop up to size. Now it's important that this is less than and not less than or equal to. Um, size is going to return 10, but the only valid positions are from 0 to 9 or 0 to size minus 1. So if you wanted to use less than or equal to, then you would have to subtract 1 from this quantity. But Typically we write the for loops like this where you start at 0 and you go up to but not including the value that size returns. And then of course we want to step, we could step 2 by 2 or 3 by 3, but in this case I want to visit each position of the array. I'm sorry, each position of the vector. An array is a close cousin, uh, but I want to be very clear here that we're using the vector as in the C++ vector class. You'll learn about arrays um, a little later. And so now in this for loop, we can process the element of the, ray, the, the uh, vector. We could be, uh, maybe we want to sum our grades together so that we can compute an average. Maybe we want to set them all to zero. Uh, in this case, I'll just print them all out. So again, remember that grades gives me the entire vector, and there will be occasions where we want to pass the entire vector into a function or method, but if I want to refer to a specific element or item or object of the vector, then I can use the at method or the subscript operator or the index operator. And it's I that is storing my index, and so I can just write that. And this will print 86 followed by four zeros followed by another 86, and then four zeros. And you could expand this to also print out I, and you could get a fairly accurate representation of what this vector looks like in memory by simply, you know, adding to the Cout statement here a print, um, an insertion for the value that I stores.